What is up everyone? Welcome back to the Hardcore Fab Shop. On today's Shop Talk video, I'm going to be removing this old ugly light that somebody put on this panel back in the day sometime or another. It doesn't fit the truck and I didn't get about to the point where I want to go ahead and get this panel all painted up and everything. So it's got to go and I figured I would make a quick little Shop Talk video and show you guys what it takes to patch a little panel like that and a couple of little simple tools that you need to be able to do it. All right, so once we get the light out of there, it's pretty simple, cut and dry deal. All we have to do is get a piece of sheet metal and get it cut to fit in there and weld it in, right? Sounds pretty basic, but there is a couple little things here that I can show you to make some of this stuff just a little bit easier for you guys. And one of those things to begin with are some of your tools that you use. So I've got this little tool here. I did a shop talk video on it here a while back. I'll go ahead and put you guys a link to it up above and it'll be a link to it also in the description below but this little tool here can be used as a little backer there and that's going to help out a bunch you're also going to obviously need something to be able to cut some sheet metal with so we need some tin snips and we need a body hammer to be able to make sure that we can flatten everything all out as we're going along and then of course it's metal and we're patching it so we actually need a welder and a grinder as well so you don't really have to know how to really weld very good but you do need to know how to set up your welder enough to be able to get a pretty good tack. You don't really actually weld sheet metal. It's really mostly just a series of a bunch of tacks. If you was to run a bead all the way around that, you would warp this whole panel up and it would be trash and you'd have to start over. So it's just a bunch of little tacks. So if you can do that, then you're pretty well to the point where you can do this panel. So this is on a 46 Chevy pickup and this was probably done back in the 70s. So they just kind of hacked a hole in there. They probably didn't even take this panel down to put it on there. So the first step that I want to do to make this a nicer finish is to go ahead and kind of clean up some of this because there's some jaggedy little things here. I don't know if you guys can see it or not in the camera, but I just want to flatten that all out so we've got a good base to start with. Same way around this hole here. It's actually got a couple little spots there that we want to knock down too. And then we'll be able to get started getting it fit for a panel to go in. So I guess the other thing that a person could use if they wanted to would be a dolly for the back side of this hammer. They don't necessarily have to be a body hammer, but it needs to be a hammer that's got a flat head on it. And we just need something to be able to kind of tap this all in place and kind of flatten it all out before we get started trying to fit a panel. I'm gonna patch that hole in as well, because that's the switch for the light. So it's all smoothed out now on both sides, hammered flat. So that looks pretty good. Now we can actually start to go to the next step and that is to clean this hole up a little bit. This hole is pretty jaggedy still all the way around. So I wanna just take the grinder in there and kind of square it up a little bit. That's gonna allow us to be a lot less work to make our patch panel in there, but it's also gonna allow the panel to fit in there a little bit nicer. So we'll get a better weld around it and ultimately a better finish. So squared up, I'm just going to use right angle grinder with cutoff wheel and I'm not going to actually sink it in here and cut with it. I'm going to grind right up against the flat surface of it here on the sides and just kind of use that as a gauge, I guess, if you will, to know whether or not it's flat. Thank you. 
So it's not like perfectly square at this point, but it's definitely good enough that we can make a patch panel for it now. And it'll be way easier to make that shape than what we had going on there before. I've got just a piece of scrap that came off the floor over there by my shear. We need to flatten that out a little bit. Make it good enough to where we can actually sit it underneath the panel and trace it out. So that is about as straightforward as it sounds. Slide that right underneath there. I'm gonna try to line up a couple of edges if I can, just so that I have a little bit less to actually cut. And there's our shape. You see I don't have to cut those two sides now, so now all I have to do is cut this side and that side, slip it in there, we'll be good to go. So I was planning on going ahead and just using my regular tin snips, but I got a cutoff wheel on the grinder here so I can actually eliminate one tool that we don't even need because I can cut it with this. So I'm going to do it with that just so that we got one less tool here that we actually need to use. Probably easier than those anyways. Gotta check our fit. We're pretty close. And go ahead and knock a corner off of here. Got a little burr on it from cutting it and knock that off real quick too. And there we go, it fits in there perfect. All right, so now that's where this little tool comes into play. This is just a magnet with a spring-loaded piece of copper on the end of it. Pretty cheap tool, you can buy it for less than 20 bucks, I think is what it was. So anyways, I'm going to use it a little bit unconventional from the way that it was designed. It's designed to sit on a piece of metal and go something like that and be a backer for like a hole, like what we have right there but I'm gonna use it to hold our plate in. So we're gonna have the magnet side to actually hold it in on one side and then the copper piece on the other side. And then I can lay our patch panel right in there. Now everything is good and flush and it'll hold it there while I tack it all in place. I obviously want to remove the magnet part of it when I'm tacking around that area, but it's going to hold it around the whole rest of it until I get to that point. So I'm going to go ahead and tack it in and show you what that looks like. Another quick thing that I should note, I use the same gauge of material that this panel is made out of for the patch. That makes it a little bit easier because like I said, now we're flush with everything. We don't have to worry about it being offset on one side or the other. And it also allows us to have a piece of scrap here to be able to play around with our welder and get our tack welding just right so we're not trying to do that on the panel that we're trying to fix. I pretty well already know where I'm going to be at on mine because I use this welder to do this stuff all the time, but I'm still going to go ahead and give it a quick zap just to make 100% for sure before I weld this up. So 
So we ended up with a nice little bead there and we've got full penetration all the way out the other side. So we know at that point that that's going to do good to weld up our panel. So now we're good to go with tacking it on. As you're tacking this, you wanna make sure that the panel isn't warping and changing because if this piece or either piece starts to warp and get out of whack from the other side, when you go to grind it, you won't be able to grind it all off smooth. It'll still have that spot there that you can see the difference in the panel. Well, that's definitely good enough to hold it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my magnet off now so I don't burn it up and I'm going to weld this out. So when you're done, your panel is going to look something along that lines right there. Like I said before, it's just a series of a bunch of little tacks because you don't want to put too much heat in here at once. And also on that note, you might have noticed there when I was welding around here that I was welding and then I would skip about an inch and a half or so and then do another one and just kind of work my way around. Also stopped about halfway through welding all those up, let it cool off for a minute and then went back and finished welding the rest of them in. So now we can actually go ahead and grind this off. Well, to knock this down, I'm just going to go at it with the right angle grinder and the flap wheel. I do have a new flap wheel on here. I think having a nice flat flap wheel helps you keep the panel flat when you're grinding them out. So that's what I like using on sheet metal. Well, that's what you look like when you got the panel all done. Pretty smooth overall. Can work that just a little bit more and get it 100% perfect. But before I do that, there's still this hole here where the switch was at. I wanna go ahead and fill that in. And then there's two screw holes where the light was actually screwed on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, our little tool here that we talked about earlier. And I'm going to back our holes here for our screws with that. That's what this is actually designed for, is for backing holes and welding them up. But this one here is a little bit bigger than I'd like to do with just this, so we'll actually have to cut another piece out for that. So I'm going to go ahead and back these real quick, weld those in, and, and then we'll move on to that one, I guess. Well guys, there you go. I'm gonna call that panel done. There is still a lot of lacquer left on here from its original paint job, somewhere underneath all that rust, I guess. And I can't really go any farther with it than that here because it's really gumming up that flap wheel. So I think this panel is gonna have to go over and get blasted and then it can get some primer on it and whatever it needs from there to be able to be body worked and ready for paint. But that's gonna be over at the body shop, not here. So this is as far as I'm gonna take you guys on this panel. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. If you did, give me a thumbs up down below the video, and I guess that's all I got for you on this one. So I'll see you guys on the next one.